What's up guys, Lord Hazen here, back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at the latest budget entry in Samsung's Galaxy A series lineup, the Samsung Galaxy A11. This is actually the cheapest phone in the 2020 A series lineup and of course it's the successor to what was last year's Galaxy A10. The Galaxy A11 is also an upgrade for folks who have the most recent Galaxy A10s, so if you've been waiting for something new, this might be the phone for you. As far as pricing and availability, you can get this depending on deals for under $150 and even get deals from it from today's video sponsor, Joe's Gadget Garage. I'm going to leave links to Joe's Gadget Garage right under that like button if you want to go check out the Galaxy A11 among other phones or tech. So before we get to it, please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications if you haven't yet. Help Lloyd Hazion get to 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> Let's start with the unboxing experience of the Samsung A11. Quick side note, here we happen to have the 32GB storage and 2GB RAM model. Sliding the cover off, the first thing we see is a little extra package right on top. Inside here is just the normal paperwork, warranty card and instructions, and unfortunately it doesn't look like this phone ships with a clear TP case like some of the A-series phones do. Next, we are met by the phone itself that shows off some key features that are an upgrade from the predecessor. These are the Infinity O display, a triple camera setup, and a fingerprint scanner. Digging a little deeper inside the box, you also get the standard 15 watt Samsung wall charger, a USB A to USB Type C cable, a pair of decent Samsung earphones, and finally the SIM ejector tool. With all that stuff out of the way, here is the Samsung Galaxy A11. Now, right off the bat, if you're coming from the Galaxy A10 phone from last year, you will notice some design changes and extra features. Already, the A11 is a pretty good size 6.4 inch phone, so a little bigger than before. Across the front, you'll see that the most obvious difference is the placement of the camera cutout. Rather than a center teardrop notch, Samsung has gone with an off-center Infinity O cutout. It doesn't look shabby at all, and fortunately, it's not in the way. In terms of build, now, since this is a budget phone, you get a budget build with an all-plastic construction housing and a plastic frame. I actually don't mind this, and honestly, it looks and feels pretty good, all things considered. The glossy finish looks nice, especially if you decide to pick up the blue variant of the phone. Also, as a side note, this phone right now comes in black, white, red, or blue, so a nice selection of colors to choose from as well. Taking a look around, everything else is about where you'd expect it. On the right, you'll find the power button and the volume up and down buttons. Up top, you get a slim earpiece for phone calls and that punch hole camera that we'll get to in just a few, and a headphone jack. At the bottom, you get a single button firing speaker, the USB Type-C charging port, and a microphone. Around back, you can see that you have the new triple camera setup, and right below that, you also have the traditional rear-mounted fingerprint scanner. Just playing around with this, it fills and functions like any other Samsung fingerprint scanner on budget phones. I particularly like the placement here and it's still comfortable even with a slight increase in phone size. It's relatively fast and accurate enough. On a budget phone, it's paramount to keep things simple and easy. And straight off the bat, the Samsung Galaxy A11 feels like it's doing just that. Also, this might be the perfect segue to introduce a body comparison between the A11 and last year's A10. Starting at the back, we can see the Samsung A11 bringing an additional two cameras over the A10 and adding to that a dedicated fingerprint scanner. In terms of size, the Samsung Galaxy A11 is also slightly taller than the A10, coming in at 6.4 inches compared to the A10's 6.2 inches. At the bottom, we can see that Samsung has moved the speaker from the rear, where it was on the Galaxy A10, which, according to me, is a really, really smart design move since the Galaxy A10 speaker was a bit muffled when it was resting on flat surfaces, so you couldn't hear the sound pretty well. And to prove that, have a listen. Wide angle pictures on good phones. Can you notice the color variation in the lens, especially the green example in this shot? What do you think of the wide angle pictures? Can you notice the color variation in the lens, especially the green example in this shot? Moving on, the microphone and USB Type-C ports are in the same location, but the headphone jack has been moved to the top of the Galaxy A11. Also, we get a Type-C port on the Galaxy A11 compared to the micro USB port we got on the A10. 
that's just about it and all things considered the volume rocker power button and sim slots are still in the same place in regards to the screen while things did get a little bit bigger the a11 doesn't get any huge display upgrades you'll still be looking at that tft display that comes in at a resolution of 1560 by 720. while samsung's premium phones have surprisingly good amoled screens you have to keep your expectations in check here since the galaxy a11 is a true budget phone and it's not going to compare with those high-end pricier devices all things said i still think things look pretty good here viewing angles aren't too bad and i think you still got some good color and contrast Yes, with only a 720p resolution, you lose a little bit in detail and the pixels are something you can pick up with the naked eye, but all in all, for 15,000 shillings, this is still a good screen for most occasions. Getting something of this size is pretty nice and you can do a lot with 6.4 inches. Stuff like videos, games and web browsing are all very immersive. Looking at the phone's internals, the Samsung Galaxy A11 packs the Snapdragon 450 processor. Just like the rest of Samsung's 2020 devices, this phone also ships with Android 10 straight out of the box, which is great. The noteworthy differences here when we put the A10 against the A11 is the processor and the GPU, where we have an Exynos chip on the A10 and not a Snapdragon, and a Mali GPU instead of an Adreno GPU. But again, this is a budget device, so you won't be pushing the boundaries on performance by any means. You are sorted for web browsing and content consumption though. Also, since you're only getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which is barely enough in 2020, you can utilize the SD slot and add up to 512 gigabytes more, which is really nice. One big advantage this phone has going for it is the battery life. With a 4000 mAh battery powering a budget friendly display and specs, this is a device that can potentially last up to two days on a single charge. I think that's important and certainly something worth considering if you're upgrading from the Galaxy A10. Now, moving on to the cameras. Once again, Samsung's focus on this is the same as all their other budget phones. All things considered, more or less, you will get an upgrade. The Samsung Galaxy A11 packs a new triple lens setup, and it includes the 13 megapixel f1.8 wide angle lens, a 5 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel f2.4 depth sensor. The new lens here is the ultra wide angle, and I honestly think this is a great addition and it sort of finishes a near perfect camera setup for a device like this coupled with some new shooting modes and even a pro mode thrown in with some extra manual controls this phone now offers a surprisingly good camera setup for its price again keep your expectations in check here because this being a budget phone you won't get those crisp hdr rich photos you get on mid-range or flagship devices but after spending more time with the device and letting it grow on you learning what it's capable of i don't see where you can go wrong with this camera So to wrap this up, what are my final thoughts about the Galaxy A11? Well, as it stands, you are getting a lot of phone for budget money. The Samsung Galaxy A11 does bring some nice upgrades from its discontinued predecessor, the Galaxy A10. Some are huge upgrades like more cameras, a bigger battery, a fingerprint sensor, USB Type-C as standard, and even a better speaker placement. The minor upgrades here mainly fall in software tweaks, and why I term them as minor is because last year's A10 got those upgrades in a software update, bringing it at par with the Galaxy A11. The Samsung Galaxy A11 is certainly geared to people who just want a simple phone to get the simple things done every day. And this is exactly what you're getting here. Also, I've got the similarly priced Samsung Galaxy M11 with me, so if you fancy seeing a comparison video on both phones, leave a comment below on what you want to see covered, and I'll serve up that video. I'm going to leave links to Joe's Gadget Garage right under that like button if you want to go check out the Galaxy A11 among other phones or tech. So that's been it, thanks a bunch for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, like this video, it helps the channel a lot, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.